Welcome partners. I'm Kyle DeWitt, Vice President of Technical Services with ScanSource, and I'm glad you've joined us for a new series of content we've created on returning to the office. Uh, as our industries begin this transition to a new normal or, or next normal, as some are calling it, our customers are looking to us collectively to help them navigate the technology challenges associated with getting back into the office. Uh, today, we're bringing you a, a panel discussion focused on healthcare. And uh, joining me on the panel today, I have a few experts from our suppliers, Axis, Code, and Honeywell, uh, to discuss these trends and what they're seeing in this space. So uh, first of all, thank you guys for joining us. Um, we'll go ladies first. I'm a proper Southern gentleman um, from Honeywell. We have uh, uh, Phoebe Cresswell, who is the uh, vertical marketing manager representing uh, Code. We have Garrett Russell, the vice president of sales and marketing. And then from Access, we have uh, Paul Barada, who is the segment development manager for healthcare. So again, thank you uh, three for joining us today. Um, we'll start with uh, we'll start with Phoebe. Um, so why don't you give us a, a quick introduction into uh, your role and why healthcare is such a key vertical for Honeywell? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Kyle, and thanks to ScanSource for having me on today. Um, so as mentioned, I'm Phoebe Cresswell with Honeywell. I am responsible for really our healthcare go-to-market strategy um, here at Honeywell. So on a global scale. Um, how we help enable our channel partners to sell into the healthcare market um, and the, the healthcare solutions that we have to provide to um, our, our healthcare and customers as well. Healthcare remains one of our primary vertical markets that we play in. So we've had a longstanding history in healthcare, um, not just from our division, but from Honeywell as a full global entity. So it remains a top priority for us, a top market for us, and something that we're excited to bring our solutions to. Uh, Garrett, we'll come to you. I'm, I'm glad to see uh, Code represented here because uh, much like Honeywell, you guys have products that are uh, specifically designed for this space. So uh, why don't you uh, give us a quick intro on uh, sure. why this, this market's relevant to Code. Sure, uh, again, thank you for your time. Thank you, ScanSource. Uh, so I'm the VP of sales and marketing for code. I've been with the company for about 12 years now, been in the barcode scanner manufacturers world for about 27 years. Uh, we've been selling into healthcare for almost 20 years, well before uh, I joined the business. And healthcare is by far our largest vertical, represents a large portion of our, of our revenue. And each and every product and service that we offer uh, is designed specifically for the healthcare space and is designed to really survive the rigors of the healthcare market, which as we know is, uh, is the most difficult uh, to, to put products into as they're running 365, 24 seven. So it's a very important uh, vertical for our business. Yep, right in your wheelhouse, right? That's yep. right, yep. Yeah. All right, uh, Paul, uh, last but not least, um, why don't you uh, do the same? Give us a quick intro into Axis and uh, where they play in the healthcare space. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Scansos, and it's a pleasure to be on the panel with everyone. Um, access Communications is a IP video access control and audio company. We were the founder of IP Video, and uh, we've been in the healthcare market for a long time, providing security um, solutions. And over the last three to four years, we've developed more and more solutions for patient care in quality of care. And it all services around, it all surrounds the um, safer, smarter hospital. And we're developing um, different um, solutions for um, patient observation and integrations with many of the different telemetry and physiological monitors. And um, we've been in the business and successful on the traditional security side, and we're building our market now on the patient care side. Thank you, and I know uh, we're all East Coasters on on this call, and uh, you and you and Garrett are in the Northeast, right? So you're kind That's of right. uh, in the hotbed. Um, so Paul, why don't we stay with you? Just um, not just uh, geographically, but what are you finding the the biggest challenge in healthcare is right now? What are people trying to solve for? So one of the biggest challenges I think that they're really having is access into the facility. How do they keep everybody safe in the facility? How do they keep um, the staff safe? And how do they keep the patients safe? 
there's a lot of technology that's out there today. Um, and it's some of it is snake oil uh, salesmen that are trying to sell um, some thermal cameras and they're claiming they're doing certain things. And really it's trying to get through all of that and really develop really good policies and procedures with the right technology to protect everybody. I hate seeing opportunistic selling. I mean, we're all in the, in the space where, you know, a good opportunity, any opportunity is a good opportunity. Uh, but you're right. They're, they're, uh, I, you know, don't get me started on body temp versus skin temp and, and some of the things that are happening out there around, uh, the space. And, um, it's so a Garrett, um, you, you know, your, yeah. your company, um, is helping healthcare providers leverage technology. Um, I'm not sure if the clinical setting is, uh, is the, the right place to focus, but uh, for sure, you guys are in the same space trying to help navigate uh, partners, help their providers with some of the very similar things that, uh, that Paul outlined. But any, uh, any use cases in the clinical setting that are unique to you guys? Yeah, so when it comes to the point of care uh, before COVID, pre-COVID, and what we're seeing today, that hasn't changed too much. You're still scanning wristbands, scanning patient meds, and the data goes into the system where uh, we've seen a, a surge of opportunity is within the testing space and actually specimen collection, uh, specifically around they need scanners and devices that can scan from far away. They wanna make sure the person doing the collection isn't getting too close to whoever they're getting the sample from. And then within the labs, they're trying to knock out as many tests as quickly as possible uh, with as minimal, with as much, with the least amount of error as possible. Uh, it's funny, I was talking to my sister last night and she said she has friends that are getting calls that they missed their appointment but they're going to call that they tested positive or something, right? So there are, oh, wow. <laughs> air, yeah, there are errors that are happening still within the labs and uh, technology that all of us on this call offer today is something that can be used to minimize errors within labs. I think they're just, they're inundated and they're trying to crank things out as quick as possible. And that's when mistakes happen. Yeah. I don't think we get into it today, um, but the uh, specimen collection and being able to track and secure all that data is uh, is a, very relevant new topic that's happening right now. And, right. Um, yeah. um, so Phoebe, I, I know you're uh, on the marketing side and, and so you're probably connected to a lot of the trends that uh, we're seeing out there um, in this space. And we've, we've noticed um, not because of COVID, not because of 2020, but um, healthcare has become way more competitive. You're in that, you're in the a very similar area yes. um, as I am. And, you know, there's in, in, Greenville, there's two very large hospital systems that are competing for the same patient. Um, there's a bunch of independent care that's out there competing for the same patient. But now, uh, now we're really focused on customer experience and driving down cost and things like that. So uh, what are some of the trends that you're seeing that are, you know, focused around that patient centered care? Yeah, certainly. So I think a, a macro trend really that we're seeing, and it's something that both Garrett and Paul both hit on, but really it's the trend of security and safety within healthcare. Um, and that's both from a patient centered approach. It's, you know, healthcare providers are really being challenged now with ensuring patients that a healthcare provider facility, whether it's a hospital or a doctor's office, um, that they are able to provide a secure and a safe patient experience. So that's something that you know we're seeing a lot of. We're also seeing a trend of patients delaying urgent care just because of that fear of you know they don't want to go into a healthcare setting and there's still a lot of the concerns and risk around it. So we're trying to help healthcare providers um, you know give them solutions to where they can ensure that patient confidence again. And so not only can they provide a safe and secure environment but there really also is a need to provide a safe and secure environment for their staff as well. Um, whether that's, you know, protective equipment or even if it's technology tools um, such as mobility solutions that we're seeing come into play. So really safety and security is at the forefront of trends right now. Um, and for healthcare, especially in our space, Unfortunately, we are also seeing the trend um, of cybersecurity vulnerabilities with healthcare systems. So um, healthcare remains one of the top industries that are targeted for cybersecurity, just given the nature of the sensitive patient data. So 
It's physically um, securing and having a safe patient environment, but it's also giving providers that security layer they need to ensure that their patient data remains safe and secure. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. That uh, cybersecurity is, uh, is my new love language. It seems, <laughs> it seems to pop up in every single conversation I have right now, but it's, uh, it's um, overwhelmingly prevalent. Uh, there are so many people Certainly taking so. advantage of the fact that people are working from home <laughs> or that um, large organizations like hospitals or, or healthcare providers or education or large enterprises, they weren't focused on securing their data as much uh, before they sent their workforce remote. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, for sure relevant. I, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, you know, this uh, series of um, thought leadership pieces we're putting together that you guys are participating in are are really focused on returning to the office. And I keep using the air quotes office because uh, in the healthcare space, um, there's not necessarily an office. There are, there are in the clinic world. Um, in the hospital space, uh, you mentioned it, Phoebe, that you know, patients are, are looking for all uh, options, alternative options to receive urgent care because they don't want to go into the facilities, but the healthcare providers themselves, they didn't, they weren't afforded the luxury to leave like, uh, like an office worker was, right? Certainly. Um, and so, yeah, this is, uh, all, you've all brought up uh, safety of employees, safety of patients. Uh, that, that front door seems to be the, uh, the key focus area right now in, uh, in this space, uh, for sure. So um, I guess, Paul, we'll come back to you and, and let, let's take a little focus on what we're doing with our partners, right? So we, we need to enable our partners to help their customers in this space navigate uh, all, all these new uh, trends and the challenges. So uh, what are you guys doing to, to help with the uh, technology buying habits now that, uh, you know, every dollar counts in the healthcare space? Yeah, so one, a couple of things that we're doing. One is um, it's a lot about operational efficiency and how do they um, use technology today, maybe existing technology that they already have invested in, and how can they use that to uh, become more efficient and with the real strain on staff, which is still happening in healthcare. Um, the levels of workplace violence are still very high in healthcare. So how can they use what they have to be more efficient and be safer? Um, and like you were saying earlier, there's this really difficult task that you have at a hospital. It's how do you make it welcoming and inviting, but also have a level of security that you can protect everybody. And it's a constant balance for people that are running the security and safety departments at a hospital. And so they're making decisions on um, equipment and other things by thinking about total cost of ownership, return, return on investment, and then really um, how is it going to better what we're doing today? And um, we're really seeing that, that those conversations, not just with security people, but with clinical, financial, and IT directors. Yeah, those TCO ROI conversations, alphabet soup all of a sudden, but the, those two conversations are the ones that help mitigate the, the snake oil. Right. So uh, right. There, there's a lot of uh, solutions that are being provided right now um, that are that are temporary and and it's topical and it's it's cultural. But there are plenty of solutions. You guys all have them uh, where you can show a partner and their customer. Um, yes, this meets your immediate need, but this investment you're making in technology is also forward looking. Uh, and if you no longer need it to handle wayfinding or self check-in, then you can do these other things with it, right? So, yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that a lot of the, these purchases they're making a year or two from now are going to be in a closet somewhere catching dust. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, a lot of money being spent on something that's not going to be uh, viable in the future. Yep. Yep. Um, so, Garrett, um, if we... Uh, uh, stay on script here. Uh, we're, we're looking at uh, re-entering facilities, right? And uh, yeah. as, as we've said, we, we've been focused a lot on the front door and uh, that first engagement with a with a patient as they enter a facility. But I think one of the, the big trends that we're seeing right now is that healthcare providers are being almost required to take healthcare to the patient and not right. the other way around. 
Um, so in your space, your, your devices, your, your company, your organization's devices are, um, you know, they're untethered and uh, they, right. they can, you can almost use them to enable a, a remote clinic. But um, in your, in your uh, day-to-day interactions with partners, are you seeing that uh, healthcare facilities are working harder on getting patients back into brick and mortar? Or are they investing in taking that healthcare um, outside the walls to the patient? It's a good question. Great question. Um, I think you're seeing both. Uh, in, in initially, and I can only speak to a few scenarios because even for our team today, we still have trouble getting into facilities. We typically have to meet outside the facility. They don't want anyone in, anyone in the hospital that isn't either a patient or a doctor. So you've seen a lot of telehealth. Now, granted, we don't sell anything telehealth today. Uh, nor can we support any of the video or things of that nature. But uh, we've seen a decline in patients going for regular checkups, follow-up visits, uh, elective surgeries, that's all down. Uh, but there's, as I mentioned, a big investment in telehealth. And from our perspective, it has been a, a move to more mobility type devices, uh, trying to minimize the number of devices that are being used in any type of setting. And ideally, you know, uh, you ask any doctor, they want to see someone face-to-face so they do bring somebody in or you do go in uh, when it comes to the technology that we offer, it's mobility, it's protective cases, and they want to minimize devices. So we're even starting to uh, see growth in our soft scanning product where they're, they can use a, a standard mobile phone to do the scanning, use the camera on the phone for the scanning. So uh, to answer your question, I think you, you are seeing more remote type of setups, more pop-up clinics, uh, uh, the technology being used there is mobility. But again, they ultimately the doctors, uh, at least I've spoke to, they really want to see the patients face to face, and they need to minimize uh, anything in the room that's going to cause the spread of infection. Yeah, and, I, and I, you mentioned it in there, but I mean, the fact that preventative healthcare visits are on the decline because of the fear of how right. to how to receive that that type of uh, clinical help is discouraging. I mean, we're yeah. we're all talking about healthcare. You could put. Yeah. you know, dentistry into this bucket, right? And right. for as, off, as long as those uh, clinics and facilities were closed and then reopened, there's now a boom in getting people into just just for, you know, typical hygiene, for preventative right. um, services. And so uh, there's a whole bunch of things going in, scan, you know, temperature scans, which we've covered and, right. and uh, self-check-ins and things like that that are just, right. uh, just in that one vertical. All right, Phoebe, let's get to your wheelhouse. So uh, back into the marketing space, um, you guys are helping uh, our partners navigate this. What types of uh, resources and, and marketing support are you providing down to your partners to help them um, find and or service their customers that are experiencing these challenges? Yeah, certainly. So, I mean, this time has been um, a busy time for myself and for fellow marketers and making sure that we're providing relevant content and relevant messaging to our channel partners. This time has certainly created a a new challenge for us in that healthcare providers, they have new challenges, they have new pain points, and they have new needs. So part of um, Honeywell's strategy and going into creating new solutions and introducing those to the market is we're really taking a step and we're really listening to what healthcare providers not only need now, but trying to anticipate their needs of the future. So as Garrett mentioned, whether that's um, specific software that they're looking for, or even down to hardware. Um, So Honeywell, you know, is well known in the industry for our healthcare products with disinfectant ready housing. You know, we've been providing that to the healthcare market for over a decade now. So even if it's it's simple things like that, we've really been trying to take the stance of addressing um, healthcare providers, their needs, their pain points, and trying to give our channel partners the ammunition to really help healthcare providers find the right technology for them and the right solution. There's so many out there. There's so many providers. There's so many companies that have, you know, niche solutions or niche products. So it's really trying to educate the market on what's available, but listening to them to understand the right fit for them and what's going to benefit them the most. So we have a lot, um, a lot of thought leadership pieces that we've been putting out. We have, we've done some industry research. 
um, with uh, healthcare um, partnerships this year um, to provide just some research data points to the market. Um, so a lot of new healthcare marketing content and asset that we've come out with over the past couple of months that we've made available to our channel partners. Yeah, that's great. And I, I didn't say it at the opening, um, and, and hopefully our audience is here to hear me say it at the end, but uh, we're all here because uh, they're looking for trusted advisors. I mean, that's the role ScanSource plays. That's the role you guys play in uh, delivering uh, products and services to the channel. And so um, that's, you're, you're exactly right, PV. I mean, they're, they're all of the content pieces that you're creating and making available to our mutual partners help them make more educated sales, uh, educated decisions. They combat the, the, uh, the opportunistic sales that uh, Paul was, was uh, referencing earlier. So, um, you know, the more, educate, uh, more education we can provide to our, our partners, uh, the better. And this is usually when I do the shameless plug that uh, I've got a whole group of, of engineers, right, that are here to help represent your brands uh, and build out full solutions that uh, can go into a, a healthcare facility and accomplish uh, whatever it is that that, that provider uh, is, is trying to accomplish. Uh, I'm going to come back to you guys for a wrap up here. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll go round robin uh, a wrap up here. I, I would be remiss if I also didn't call out, uh, you know, doubling down on the cybersecurity comment earlier that um, all of the products represented here and other products that are going into healthcare facilities to solve specific problems um, as a partner bringing products into a, a non-green field environment, a brown field environment, I've heard people call it. Um, but uh, make sure that you understand the risk that you're introducing, right? So uh, any new device that goes onto a network uh, is a possible breach point and you don't need to be cybersecurity experts uh, to deploy any of the solutions that we've talked about today. Um, you know, contact these guys, contact us, uh, let us help you navigate uh, that field, those challenges, make sure that you understand uh, what their requirements are. And there's um, plenty of uh, security managed service, uh, managed security providers out there uh, we can all collectively partner with. All right, so as a wrap up, um, I guess we'll go back, uh, we'll go Phoebe, we'll start with you since you're uh, still on camera here for me. Uh, so what's the, uh, the single biggest piece of advice that you're giving to uh, your partners right now as they uh, work with their, uh, with their healthcare customers? So I'd say don't be afraid of innovation. Um, we know that new things are needed and there's new needs that come up every day. So don't be afraid to innovate, but also don't be afraid to partner. Um, a lot of, you know, resellers, a lot of our channel partners, I hate to say it, it's cheesy, but you know, you are not in this alone. There are so many manufacturers, you know, like Honeywell, like Code, like Axis, who we're all working towards, you know, the same industry to help provide and give solutions. So don't be afraid to partner with your manufacturers and with a lot of the software providers out there. Um, I think a full solution is what a lot of healthcare providers are looking for. And sometimes really strong partnerships can breed the best solution. So don't be afraid to partner and don't be afraid to innovate. Yep. They're looking for that one, uh, one back to pat, as I call it. Right. Uh, so they're, they're looking for that one partner to go to, not just the single piece. Mm -hmm. uh, Garrett, same thing for you. Uh, sure. What kind of advice are you giving to your partners right now? What a lot of folks seem to forget is that, you know, hospitals and any ancillary, ancillary healthcare facilities are really businesses. They have a P and L debt load or hiring or furloughing staff. So what my biggest piece of advice would be look at any news surrounding any facilities you're looking into selling to. Uh, are there any new, uh, are they doing any major new installations? Any are they buying a lot of products? Are they acquiring facilities? This is a good sign that they're in a good place financially right now and uh, during this crisis and they could be buying equipment, buying any of the products any of us are offering here today. On the flip side, are they, are they furloughing staff? Uh, are they taking on a lot of debt? Uh, is there any negativity surrounding the facility? They're, they're shedding, they're selling off different pieces of their, of their company. That means they're likely not in a great cash position financially. And then the last thing would be if they're quiet right now, you don't see anything related to news. Uh, it could be that they're likely in a wait and see mode. Maybe projects are getting pushed out. Doesn't mean the projects are dead. They're just waiting to see how this virus is going to play out, how it's going to affect them financially. And you just need to maybe touch base with them, see what's going on. And perhaps there is a project in the short term that you can sell into. 
and we would greatly, uh, of course, support anything you do. But again, you want to look for the areas where you see a lot of positivity. Yeah, and those quiet ones might not know the questions I ask, right? That's so correct. It's, it's at least right. worth that first phone call just just to find out why they're so quiet. Yep. That's right. All right, Paul, um, wrap us up here. Well, there's two tough people to follow, Garrett and Phoebe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, I, I would say that it's really important to reach out to those end customers and, and be involved and, and ask them what they need. And don't be afraid to ask them what they need, um, knowing that you can hopefully give them something or get the right person in front of them, maybe uh, Code or Honeywell that has those, those different um, solutions. It doesn't necessarily mean that when I talk to somebody, it's all access. I, I'm looking to better the hospital as a thought leader, and it could be bringing in other partners. So it's really important to listen to what they need and uh, help them. Uh, one of the things that's out there right now is the CARES Act. In the CARES Act, there's a lot of funding that's there that they can use, and they may not even know about that. So you wanna, you wanna do, do some research, understand what's happening, uh, be there with them, uh, another thing that I've done is I've paid for uh, dinners and lunches for different shifts on, on the departments just to, to say thank you for, for what you're doing and saving lives. And um, there's two things that come out of that. One is the, uh, the joy that I get from somebody calling me and saying thank you. And the other thing is, is that they know that we care. So uh, hopefully uh, it was hard to wrap up after the other two, though. I'll tell you. <laughs> no, that's great. I, I, I want to pull one thing out of there. You guys don't have the luxury of continuity. Uh, I was on the first one of these that we did with many of your peers, uh, the second one. And to a person, everyone has said, listen, like that's the, the to me, that's the single biggest piece of advice that a partner can have going into a customer. Don't go in talking. Don't go in pitching. Listen to what they're trying to solve for and then help them uh, help them solve those problems. That's where that's where we all become the, the trusted advisor. So, all right, so I'll, uh, I'll uh, wrap things up today. Again, thank you very much, uh, Access Code, Honeywell. Um, we appreciate the three of you uh, joining us for this piece today. Uh, this is, again, as I said at the opener, this is one of a series that we're creating. Uh, lots more information on the ScanSource website on returning to office in this vertical and other verticals. And with that, uh, partners, I will thank you for your business and uh, hope to thank talk you. to you very soon. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Kyle. Yeah, thank you, Kyle. Thanks for your time.